Hello everybody and welcome back to Tony Northeastern and I hope you're all keeping safe and well. And um, yeah, it's a lovely sunny afternoon up here in the loft and um, I'm just looking around um, at the South Shield station. Um, it's hard to believe it's been nearly two years now since we last finished this building. Um, my main concern was when I built the roof was because it's a metallic structure the expanding and contraction of the steelwork would play havoc on the card um, which is only super glued to the edges of this um, 1.5 um, welding rods and um, yeah, so it seems to have held up. I was expecting um, some of these plastic strips to lift because it's in direct sunlight of the window. And uh, yeah, it's held up quite well. Um, I'm always particularly <laughs> careful um, when filming around the station because I've only just got to clip this spire and it um, <laughs> quite easily snap. Um, I have done that once already in previous videos but yeah it's always good to look back on previous builds and, uh, and I'm sure you guys like to to see this station now and again um, without trains running possibly um, yeah so the reason why I'm looking around here is to involve the next project and um, I just like some of these little cameos like we still got um, uh, Mrs. Sims there at the fish and chip van Basil and Bonds left his car <laughs> and of course Mrs. T's sweet shop yes it's like um, time has stood still um, especially in and around this area um, it's basically once you've built something that's it we, we don't tend to visit it again um, unless it, it does become a part of a video of course and we still have the Queen and Prince Philip at the bus stop yeah how changed, times have changed um, yeah we still got the baker there he's just dropped off his stotty cakes and his bread rolls and his icing buns for the refreshments room which is just in here um, yeah it's, it's good to look back so as we coming round to this side um, there's one thing I forgot to do when we um, finished the building and that's to add the signaling so that's what this video is going to be about a set of signals for this end of the platform here it'll be a three quadrant signal to cover the three lines heading that way towards um, the, the station interior or well, the station platforms and it's deadly quiet in there at the moment nothing nothing is happening so I'm thought, thinking to myself well if I'm going to build the signals for here I might as well do the same for Jarrah Road and uh, I think, if I remember rightly, this was a kit as well um, for the interior for the signals. I think, but that was a, L, a laser cut kit, slightly different from the ratio kit. And talking about kits, and these are the kits I'm going to be using. Um, they're all uh, ratio kits. Uh, this kit here I'm going to use for Jarrah Road. I'm going to make up a uh, twin quadrant signal. 
or JRO and this Pratt truss gantry will be for the south shields um, signalling so let's make a start first thing we are building is for the Jarrah Road um, and this is the one I'm looking to do this one here where you've got the two signals one for each line and then we've got a uh, small up and down bring on arm for the um, platform too that, so that will be ideal for the the loop as it were that's on the track plan um, the signals are L and ER upper quadrant signals so um, and they're by ratio of course um, I've spent the last hour trying to get these very fragile pieces out of this flashing um, there's so much flashing on them to take off see you see all along that edge there it's really really bumpy that should be flat um, I think this is an older design judging by the the box but uh, even so that's going to take a lot of um, fine sanding to get those lumps and bumps out of there um, just let me show you what I mean by looking at this now look at all that flashing in there alright it's loose but you've got to cut that away very very gingerly and try not to break any of the lattice work if you can help it so I've almost got my parts um, out of this um, kit assembly as it were um, so I'm not going to create these to move these are just static ex exhibits so I'm just going to make them up and plonk them on the layout now the other kit the other ratio kit which is the Pratt Truss Gantry it looks far newer and the parts are more crisp as you can see so I'm going to have less trouble putting these together so I'm quite looking forward to making this kit up now this is the so I'm using some P120 sandpaper to try and get rid of those bumpy bits on the edge there try and smooth it out because it's going to be seen once it's painted I'm gonna try and get that as flat as possible. You can see what I mean there. If you just look down that edge, if you can see that, look, look at the state of that. So I think the sandpaper will take that up. If you're very careful. I've not made these before. I'm just surprised how yeah that works the treat so it has smoothed it off a little bit so that shouldn't show up when it's painted. So that's the one I'm gonna be making. Um, calling on armed so that I like that idea. So that'll be the platform one and that'll be on platform two. So I'm just following the basic instructions of this kit. So that's the signal there. So I'm slowly putting it together. Um, so I've got the two corners made up. And it's quite delicate. So easily, um, you can quite easily break it. So just going to glue these two halves together and then glue it onto the base and then, the, then I'll be happy then, then it'll be more secure as it were so 
a glue, well, no, a bead of glue up the inside of here. And each one of them trusses one on top. And then do the same to this piece here. And then just put the two halves together. Like so. Right, so that's the lattice frame glued to the base. So I'm just putting in the cross lattice work. It goes across the top, and that's ready for the walkway to go onto the top. So it's all a question now, just assembly now. Once I get the kit out of the flash. So yeah, I think it's because this is a really old kit, that's probably why there's so much old flashing on it. I mean the, the newer kit, like I showed you earlier, it's got a lot less on it, a lot less. Right, so very delicately cut out the walkway. Just very gently scoring across the top there. And eventually it will cut through. We'll do the other side. I've had to clean away the flashing in between in between these gaps in the planking. So hopefully when it's painted you won't see any flashing there at all. Alright, so I'll clean that up. Just run the blade across take off any of the bigger bits and just use the sandpaper for the rest notice how I'm gripping it on those two there because you don't want them snapping off so just grip it there, do those first and then do the same with the other end right and that's ready glue on there. Like so. I've moved on a little bit um, and I thought right I'll just try this just to, to see if this is going to be the right location for this set of signals. Now the problem I'm having is that there's not a lot of clearance between the coach and the signal so I'm gonna have to rethink what I'm doing here maybe have two separate signals one either side um, I can't go too far this way um, because it's right on the bend and it hits it so that would have been the ideal position but it's so close and um, I don't think that's a good idea so I think I'm gonna have to put two separate signals in one here and the other one on this side as you can see, it'll then control both roads coming out of Jarrow Road, if that makes sense. This signal, unfortunately, well, it'll have to go somewhere else on the layout. But um, 
that's the thing you've got to try these things before you make your decision on where you want to put your signals ideally that would look great in the middle of there and it's functional as well because it controls both roads on the tracks if you know what I mean but it's just too close to any of the rolling stock even though I will be restricting this station just for suburban coaches even looking at this from this view it just misses the signal box by about five millimeters so that is um, so close right so it's back to the drawing board right so here we are we're back at the drawing board and um, yeah so what I'm going to do I'm going to make up two signals one for the right hand side which will have the bringing on on arm for um, running on this on the loop as it were and this one will be the um, home starter um, yeah so I've decided to make these mechanically um, operatable so on the drawing it says to put a piece of um, 0.5 dowel rod through on the arm which we get in the kit anyway and this then will operate the lever up and down as you can see that one's working quite well it's it's fiddly and um, I probably won't end up um, using them um, but um, it, uh, as we always say the devil is in the detail um, so we shall carry on I've already painted the signal arms themselves as you can see there um, that's just the red coat um, paint and then I've got to put the white stripes on um, and I'll paint the backs as well which is white with the black stripe on so I shall carry on and we'll see where we are I've now cut out the a set of ladders for one of the um, signals and um, it leaves a lot of ridges across the top edge there when you cut them out and um, as you can see clearly in this flash and down this edge there you can see all the all the ridges so you've just got to sand them out um, once you've done that then you can um, repaint the plastic ladder black and uh, hopefully you won't be able to see any of those ridges at all. Now I'm going to tackle putting the levers onto these signals. Um, as you can see, I've got my little piece of um, 0.5 wire. I've already bent it at 90 degrees, as you can see, just there. I'll just point it out to you. It's just there. And it comes through the other side, through the lever, as you can see, and I've got roughly about 10 millimeters worth of length through there. That's to allow me to bend it back and then cut it once I have fitted this little tiny bracket here. Um, this bracket is part nine on the drawing. So I'll just feed that over the wire. Hopefully it'll go through quite easy. There you go. And then we'll just let that rest there for a minute and then what we do we'll just bend that back over if we bend it along with the arm then it shouldn't do any damage to the other side so I'll just push that through and squeeze it right so basically I'm not crushing it against the signal lattice work as it were in case it might break so I'm using the lever to press against so it spreads the wire that I'm adding to this and then what we'll do then we'll just cut that back and then I can glue that little tiny bracket to the column as it were so I'll just cut that off cut the excess off And then that should then, once the bracket is glued in place, 
that should allow the lever to go up and down. Right, so let's take a break time from the signals. Um, as you can see, I've, I've painted them up now um, with a black base and I've also made a start on the wiring. I'll, I'll talk about that um, when we come to do the wiring on this one. Right, so like I said, I'm taking a break and um, while we're at Getz, I met Lord Al and um, he kindly gave me this privy. So, I'm going to decorate this within keeping of a lord. Right, so I'm going to drill a hole through the roof here and down the side. But uh, I'll let you guys guess what this may be. As you can see, it's come through the side of the privy. This is so I can attach a little bit of detail. But only a lord would have this on his privy. So basically, I've just cut a tiny little slot there to take whatever it is I'm going to put onto it. So, this is what I've done to Lord Al's privy, as it were. As you can see, he's got a flagpole um, bolted to the side. He has gold fittings on the door, hinges and handles. And he's even got a golden crown on the top of the flagpole. Now that has got to be fit for his lordship. <laughs> right, Al, um, I have made you a flag as well. So I'm sure you've got a privy on your layout. So I've made you a flag. I will send this to you. As you can see, it's got a dragon either side um, with a golden crown on the top. So you can super glue this to your lavvy when uh, when you get it. So there you go. Now then, back to the serious work of these signals. <laughs> right, so moving on. Um, signals uh, are coming on leaps and bounds. Uh, as you can see, I've, I've painted the base of the signals and the ladders and the bracket that the uh, lamp holds uh, sitting on. And I've bent up the um, workings for the signal arms. Um, there is dimensions on the drawings, um, which gives you the lengths of, of these angles to bend at. Um, this one's slightly different because um, obviously I put a little set kink into this one just there to go into the lever. So yeah, so that works. So it'll be interesting to see how all this connects up um, now that the arms have dried. I've just got to add some white stripes on the red ones. I'm not using the home um, distance signal. Um, or the distance signal. So, uh, we well, shall see what all this looks like uh, when they're all fully assembled. Um, doing the um, cranking um, mechanism, these long bits of wire is a bit fiddly and I'm not sure how well these are going to work. Um, but we shall see, because you you've got to measure the centre point on that top bracket there. I don't know if you can see that. And then you've got to measure the centre point on the lower crank um, while the arm is in its down position. But, um, yeah, the dimensions are on the um, drawings that you get with the um, kit. Right, so the next thing I'm doing is... Um, fitting the signal arms. Um, so what I've done here is I've put the wire through the signal arm to start with um, and then 
I'll put it through the bracket that's on the lamp layer. There's a little circular bracket. So in order to do that, you've got to open up the hole. Just slightly drill it with a 0.5mm drill bit. The hole is already there by the way, it's just a case that when you've painted do you tend to fill the hole in with paint so I'll just and then leave the wire a little that little bit longer so you can trim it back once it comes through the other side and then that way we can line up the other wire which comes up from the lever arm there which is what I've got to do next um, this is one I've done earlier <laughs> I didn't think I was ever going to get these things to work because they're so um, fragile to put together but uh, this one does work there you go it's only very slight But um, these will be static anyway, I'll, I'll not be um, possibly be running around to the other side of the layout just to <laughs> lift the signal arm up, especially where these are going um, at Jarrah Road. But uh, if I turn it around this side, you can actually, can you spot the wire? Because I've painted it white. I actually see it going up and down very slightly. Right, so that's one done. Um, so yeah, if you put the wire through there to start with, connect the wire down to the lever arm as per instructions. Leave this loose and then just there at the top there's another hole. And that's where you feed in the other wire with it, which actually pulls the signal arm up and down. So don't do this one up yet until you've got this one done and then you can connect the wire into there then you can push that through and then cut it off at the back right so we're almost there with the final connection as you can see this is the the upper rod here and it's connected to the um, lever arm here and uh, I've measured it uh, as per drawing to from the center of that when it's in its um, stop position so now it's just a case of connecting the two up while it, these are loose so I've pre-drilled the hole and it's just a case of just pushing that through the top hole on this little tiny lever frame like so it's very delicate it's one little slip and you could break that arm right and now we can push this wire through which then holds that lever arm in place so we'll just check to see if this moves so it's, it's kind of there just uh, come back away you can see it's not quite 100% perfect yet because it's not quite flat but uh, I can work on that I can tweak As you can see, so if we just push that up and then down, so there's not a lot on there at the moment, but I can tweak that. I can straighten out this 90 degree bend and that will give me a little bit more play on the upright. Right, so I've straightened out uh, the 90 degree at the top and the 90 degree at the bottom, which which now um, makes the signal um, a lot, lot better on the flat. So now I can just, yeah, I'm happy with that. So what I do now is need to trim the wires. because so I've got a wire there that needs to be trimmed just there. So I trim that back and then I'll trim this wire here, this long one at the back of here. And then I can um, do any touch-ups on the paint 
Uh, it's quite a few bits of uh, touch-ups to do on the paint. So hopefully the next time you see these will be on the layout. Right, so here we are. We're back at Jarrah Road and I have now placed the signals um, where I think they should be. Um, this one will be controlling the platform going in and out of platform one and this one will be controlling the traffic going in and out of platform two. Um, I've just stuck them down and yep the levers are still working as you can see. Um, what I've done though, I've cut them back because they look huge and I'm um, looking at some photographs there's no way those levers down the bottom there would be that big so I've, I've cut them back and um, I can still control them that's that one and I'll see if I can do that one without obscuring your view and yeah, that one is still working but um, <laughs> I think mainly that they'll be for static purposes only because uh, as you know the control panel is miles away from Jarrah right so that's one set of signals done um, which virtually completes this video uh, we still got the signals left for South Shields to do um, which will be a gantry signal um, which controls the three roads um, there have, I have seen photographs of it so I'm going to try and copy what's in the photographs so let me just show you what else I've added to Jarrah Road the other thing I've added to Jarrah Road is this little plate lays hut it's a bit crooked uh, it, it was second hand which I picked up from the Great Central Railway and I've just bashed it about a bit and um, changed um, the colour scheme a little bit to try and blend in with what we have here and it looks like someone's got the kettle on in there because you've got a little bit of a smoke coming from the chimney there hmm just adds that little something a little extra detail if in that corner and it fills it up quite nicely Right, I've got to have one more last look at the um, the lavvy, and there it is. Um, it's just temporary sitting there. But um, Alan, thanks again for the lavvy, and uh, hopefully we'll get in contact soon. And uh, thanks again. Right, thanks again everybody for watching, um, hope you've enjoyed what you've seen, you may have learned something new, maybe not, but until next time, stay safe everybody, bye for now, bye.